and I wanted to find a way to capture Nothing Man kind of sound with the drums and then the synth melodic stuff that was happening on the David Gray White Ladder. Doing both of those kind of made me feel like, okay, I think we can get close to the direction at least I had in my head. Because I've said this many times that when I'm producing an album, I'm kind of thinking of songs that it reminds me of and using certain aspects of that production technique, reverbs, the snare sound, to incorporate it and then finding ways to apply other sounds to make it its own unique personality. And I feel like that worked really well with this Todd Kessler song and the album in general, because every song had its own vein. And I said, oh, this reminds me of John Bryan or all oh, this reminds me of, you know, an Ethan John song that I heard one time that was just really beautiful. And we just applied that on specific songs. And by having the same players playing on the project, like you usually do when you're making an album, just because the songs are a little different most of the time it works really well together as an album i knew this was going to vinyl i knew this was going to be one of those albums that was all about front to start listening and when we were tracking this before i i said god this sounds like pearl jam i said this would be a really great opening track for the album it's very cinematic feeling and we have to be very delicate with our sonic sounds to impart the least amount of distraction, but the most amount of emotional heartstring tugging to get out of it. Because if you just let it sit, it's going to be a beautiful song. But if you push it too hard, it can ruin the beautiful side of it. And I think for this song and why I chose today for our big chorus, this song was because I feel in general, it's a great song. You could screw it up really quickly with the wrong reverbs. You could screw it up really quickly with the sound of your drum compression. It all could come crashing down once you have it all going, and it will just lose the audience or the listener specifically. This is one of those songs that sounds really cool in headphones when you're sitting back on your couch or wherever with your eyes closed. Again, the start to finish thing where you leave it feeling different than when you started it. So considering all that, I would like to pull up the electric guitar. This one doesn't have a terrible amount of sound issues because we virgin tracked it on its own after the fact. Even though Todd played on the rhythm section live, drums, bass, and guitar when we did it live, we overdubbed this with a little better tone at Rand Studio with a 57 and a Bayer Dynamic 160. Both mics sound great. Did you get that out? Both mics sound great on their own, but when you combine them, it adds this really special hard left, hard right, I'm in the center thing that is not necessarily stereo, but it's not necessarily mono either. And it's a left to right thing versus it being a front to back thing. If we jump these into mono, even if we balance it, Clearly, there's some phase things going on with the guitar having two different mics versus it just sounds a little more like you're with the guitar. I did leave these on here. I'm just scooping a tiny bit of 200, 250, 270 on both tracks. We're sculpting here. And then I have a little bit of the CLA, LA-3A, just taking some of the peaks out. I'm going to take these out because I think I want to hear a 160 on the whole package. And also, I don't want to put a compressor on one side and on the other, two channels, because it's going to operate a little differently. So if I put it on the stereo, it's going to pull everything down together. very 
very subtly adding a little bit of a flick to it that makes the guitar sound a little bit more alive. Okay, for this guy, I'm going to go back to the Helios. But instead of the Helios, I'm going to use the Waves. That is basically the Helios, but it sounds a little different on the electric guitar. If I just engage the 60, this is an Andrew Shep's trick. Engaging the 60, but not touching the gain on the bottom end of this guy, adds a little more body, and for guitars, works really well. Instead of doing something like an R bass or adding low end of an EQ, it's a harmonic thing. And again, it sets itself a little different. Let's compare the two. This is the Waves version, HLS. drums just automating a little bit of bass Like how the guitar sounds with this 160. 